So in terms of placing the cue ball then, talk, talk me through what the rules are and what your preferences are. Yeah, I mean, for instance, uh, I break from the left, I just prefer it. Um, like I said, if we're playing Moscow and you could break shot if you like, my aim is to hit the one ball here hard and get the cue ball of this side rail with a little bit of left hand spin. Because if you put a bit of left hand spin, it seems to squeeze this ball down. You're trying to make that ball in there. Right. and you make the one ball in there. So my personal preference is to put it there and I like gripping my hand over and sort of grabbing underneath the cushion, you know right. what I mean? Because okay. obviously you're going to hit the ball really hard, do you know what I mean? So you don't want to be like, you know, like you're potting the ball so you really, you know, there's a bit of movement going on. Sometimes we're playing tournaments where you have to uh, break inside the box. Yep because that makes this break even harder still, because you can't hit the one ball where you want, do you know what I mean, to squeeze that in. Yeah. So inside the box, they'll just draw a couple of little lines, yep. you know, usually inside these diamonds, they'll put a bit, two little marks there, and you have to break inside the box, so you break from here. Then you're still trying to do the cut break, like I said, but it just seems to be a little bit harder inside the box. Yeah, Yeah. because it's that angle you need. Yeah, it's that angle you need, to sort of try and squeeze that in this pocket and the one ball in the middle. So when you go into the middle of the table, you, you haven't quite got that angle. So that's even more difficult. But obviously we play 10 ball. Um, just a quick demo on the 10 ball. Mm -hmm. uh, this is most pros favorite game because it's a call shot game. So Who's favorite game? Most of the pros, we, right. all, you know, we all play this. When there's like money games going on, everybody plays this. It's a call shot game, so there's no flukes. Right. So that's okay. better for us. But in 10 ball, you would never break from the cushion. No. You would always break from near the middle. And the idea being is when you break, you're trying to hit the one, pop the cue ball up and stop it in the middle. And then these two balls behind it, you can get them tracking towards the middle. So you're trying to pop one of them two. Right. But that'll all come down to like, with a magic wrap, they're all touching, so it will always track. So it's about getting the speed and you just stop the white. But I would never break from the side in 10 ball. You always break from the middle, right. do you know what I mean? And you're just trying to like pop it and just make a, a ball. Okay. But when you've not played 10 ball for a while, to try and break and park the white, it's impo it's really difficult. It, there's a lot of timing on that. You know, yeah. you have to practice for hours. Probably the best guy in the world doing that, Shane. He's got like the most unbelievable 10 ball right. break I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, so for instance, this would be like, uh, most of the tournaments I play in is, this, is these rules, but obviously the tournament, everyone's familiar with the Moscone. This is the break we use, nine balls on the spot. And you got to make three points. So it, it's a hard cut break. So you're trying to just hit the one sort of, if you're aiming the one in between the diamond and the pocket, mm -hmm. just for, to give you a rough idea, if right. you like. So you're not flat on the face? No, not flat on, not the, on face. the face. Yeah, and you're not potting the one. You sort of, just as a rough guide, you know, you're aiming like okay. in between this diamond and the pocket. Yep. Then I just put a tiny bit of side on it. But as you can imagine, trying to hit it hard and get it, it, this comes down to pure practice and, you know, you get the feel for the shot. But the idea being is, it's a hard cut break like that. And then obviously trying to make the wing ball. But as you can see, when you've not got the magic rack, yep. that's where all the gaps come into play and yeah, it becomes a bit difficult, tight. do you know what I mean? With the magic rack, it's the same rack every time. Yep. But that's what you're trying to do, just cut break. So the plan is to try off. and get the one. Yeah, with the, with the magic rack, you can squeeze the one in there or you can squeeze the one ball in there. Yep. But you have to put loads of spin on it to it, it squeezes it down out of the pack. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But obviously when you're using a normal wooden rack, that's where the gaps all... There's so much difference using a wooden rack to a magic really? rack. It's amazing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you wouldn't think there was, but the difference is unbelievable. So in a tournament, do you tend to find that you get used to how a table's breaking? You get used to the, the cloth and... Well, you, well, what you would do is you would know that, for instance, when like the China opens on, you know you're going to play on the, like with the uh, the Chinese version of ball, if you like. You know the cloth super quick. The one, on the so the break over there is like a bit of a pop break, and you just try and pipe the white in the middle, so you don't. There's no real cut break. 
so you just park in the white because you know the wing ball's guaranteed every time because of the way they're really? set up, yeah. yeah. But when you move the nine ball on the spot, that's not guaranteed, so that's when you have to try and spin and do the cut break, do you know what I mean? So before each tournament, you would know what the break rule is and yeah. where you're going. You think, oh, well, I better practice this break at home and right. get the time. It's all you know different, I mean? really. Yeah, you know, like my next tournament, European Tour, three-point rule, nine on the spot, so it's this, it's this hard cut break, do you yeah. know what I mean? We're playing that cut break then. How are you striking the cue ball? Are you hitting it just full in the face or? Are you... No, I'm hitting it sort of cent centre of the white with just a little bit of left hand spin on it. Right. I'm not putting top on it or I'm not screwing it, so it's like a stun shot, middle of the white, and just like maybe a tip to the left. Yeah. That's where I'm aiming. But obviously, you can imagine when you're trying to hit it hard, it's not easy to hit where you're hitting because you you know you're really trying to yeah. hit it hard. That's why you might hit a few bad ones early on, and it's not easy to get that timing. But when you're playing it, you know, over the space of hours and hours, you you find the break. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's it's important to practice the break. So talk us through actually how you're striking the ball then, because that's you know because you you don't look like you're putting a massive amount of effort into it, but the amount of power you get as you're striking. Yeah, it, I how are you doing that? I suppose. Um, I mean, it's not your conventional setup to pot the ball. Obviously, I'm a bit more side on. I've got both my knees bent mm -hmm. and you're a bit more looser. Uh, you don't want to sort of hit it and then like sort of jump through it. Yeah. It's all about the timing. So I'm like, as I pull back, I can probably lift up and it's all um, you know, like a timing thing really. Right. And then push right through. So you've got you your head down then to sort of, sorry. So you've got your head down to sort of line it up. Yep. But then once you've pulled the cue back, yeah. you have to strike it. Yeah, it, it, it would be difficult to say, oh, as you pull it up, you want to start coming up. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's not really it's just a case. A natural thing, it's, like, it? it's a bit of a natural thing, but you don't want to be sort of like hitting it and going, you know, like that, because there's no real. And you'd look silly. Yeah, and you'd look <laughs> silly. So it's more like a, it's like a motion thing, but I have both legs bent, and, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm a bit more. I'm not like that, because I can't really move then. Do you know what I mean? There's no. Yeah. So I'm side on, yeah, and it's sort of like pull up, and a lot of them, it's called the snap. As they pull back, they raise up, and it's like they snap the cue down, yeah, and that creates a lot of power. Bustamante, prime example, is loose, comes up, and it's like the cue comes up, and it's like snap. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think he's got one of the hardest breaks on tour. 30 mile an hour plus, you know what I mean? Right. Which is, it's not easy to get that. I think my hardest is 28. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's just do a few breaks then, just so we can film it and watch right. and see how you do it, yeah? Yeah. 